Hi. Hi, this is Jack Stanley. Uh, I wanted to talk today a little bit about uh, another story that I thought would be interesting to share. And that is, for a number of years, it was my pleasure to be friends with uh, the operatic basso, Jerome Hines, who liked to be called Jerry, of course, and uh, also one of the great tenors of the 20th century, Franco Corelli. We used to get together quite often. I would be with Jerry much more often, but we would often get together and we would listen to music. We would listen to recordings. We would uh, sit and chit-chat about the history of singing its artistry. It was a fascinating period of my life because uh, I had to sit and listen to two great artists talking about their careers, people they had worked with, um, also about uh, things that were interesting to them. Now, Jerry Hines, his wife was suffering from Lou Gehrig's disease she was bedridden, and we would often bring something in there to entertain her, like music or whatever it may be. And every now and then, if I thought of it, I would bring some old operatic recordings and a wind-up phonograph, and we would set it up in Lucia's room, and uh, then she could listen to stuff. And she was delighted with that. And so I brought in recordings of Tetrazzini and Caruso and Melba and Scotti and Schumann Heinck and lots of others. And we would sit and listen. Some of those recordings prompted conversation. Um, this is one of them from that gathering. The Victor recording. See if I can get the label there for you. It's Caruso and Dica Gorza. Sing a la luz de luna. Um, Corelli loved this recording. I wrote on the back of it, you know, everything about uh, this record and what happened at the time. In fact, I did it with a number of recordings that I brought because I thought it was such an interesting circumstance to play some of these recordings by great singers of the past and having great singers of the not-too-distant past coming. In fact, Corelli was singing along with this record, which was really interesting. It was fascinating to hear the voice of one of the greatest tenors of the 20th century uh, with one of the greatest tenors of the 20th century. So uh, it was kind of an interesting affair. I always remember a lot of the recordings that I played Jerry and Franco would sit there with their thumbs and go, and uh, so judgment was passed <laughs> on on each and every recording. Turns out Franco Corelli loved the voice of Tetrazzini. In fact, I made a whole recording of uh, of Tetrazzini recordings for him on cassette tape common at the time and he was so happy about it he called me up the grazie 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 and uh, he, he loved it um mrs corelli would be there she would have the dog in tow with bows in its hair and she'd be sitting there you know franco franco you know do this franco do that uh <laughs> 
And and Jerry Hines, of course, was one of the most phenomenal vocal teachers going. He had an amazing understanding of the voice. He wrote a number of books. You know, it's surprising. He had a doctorate uh, in science and mathematics. And uh, he was an opera singer. <laughs> and he was working on books on mathematics to prove the number zero. And he was constantly thinking of new things, and also was quite religious, which I found an interesting combination. Yeah. Amazingly strong religious conviction with a scientific background, which I found a little hard to mix, but he did it. Whatever, whatever was good for him, I was happy. Uh, Franco Corelli. He was an interesting fellow. He told me so many stories. In fact, when I was pulling out some of these Caruso records from my collection, uh, he was saying they're in such good shape. He said, my uncle had Caruso records. He said, which he listened to when he was a kid. He said, but they were nowhere near the shape yours are. And he said, are they real? <laughs> and I said, of course they are. Nonetheless, I took Franco and his wife shopping one day, which was an experience par excellence. Uh, I took them to a shop right in Clark, New Jersey. Well, they had the little dog with them, which you couldn't bring into the supermarket. So Franco stuck the dog and held him uh, on his chest and wrapped his trench coat around the dog, so the dog's head was just underneath his chin. And uh, we went around, and of course, his mastery of the English language was not too good. And I always remember, he pointed to the pink roses and, and said to the lady behind the counter, Lady, I like 12 red roses, and pointed to the pink. Well, she grabbed the red roses. And he said, no, no, lady, the red ones. And, the, <laughs> and it kind of went downhill. Mrs. Corelli saw what was going on, went behind the counter, took over. And uh, it just went crazy from there because uh, they started arguing and yelling at each other in Italian. Then, uh, after getting the flowers, Franco and I went outside with the dog under his chin, and uh, he started singing outside. It was kind of fun. I went to get my car, put the flowers in there. Then I came back, and Corelli was standing in the street going, Hey, driver! <laughs> And uh, he and Mrs. Corelli, who had just entered the baking department and upset that, saying they had no good breads there, <laughs> they both went storming out, and I took them over to uh, uh, Jerry Hines' house. Uh, but every time I see these records, I, I think of those glorious days when I got to meet so many people who were involved in old opera, you know, uh, some of the luminaries we used to get together every now and then, Jerry would have them over, and he would always make sure I was there so I could meet them, and so I got chances to sit with Robert Merrill, and, and Nietzsche Albanese, um, and of course Jerry, Franco Corelli, and a few others, which I'll tell about another time, because amazingly, time has run out. And you know, the older you get, the easier it is to tell stories. But the hard part is, quite often, the hard part is to end them. But it's time. So, just remembering a wonderful time with these records, recording and playing. All kinds of great music for dear old friends who are now so long gone.